Good morning. It is plot harvest day here. Corn plot. We're starting with the corn this year. I don't know if I've ever done the corn plot before I've done my bean plot, but um, that's the way it's going to work here. So we're going to check the combine over real quick, check the oil, and just look everything over real fast. And then uh, we're going to open the field up. we got to do the end rows and the stuff along the sides of the plot before um, Wade, my agronomist, and Tony, my sales rep, both come in this morning to help with the plot. So... Um, it's going to take a while because there's 26 entries plus the agronomic trials on the end. I'll show you the process when we get to it, but it'll go pretty, it'll, it'll, it should run smoothly. Engine oil is good. Hydraulic oil is good. Drive around the tree. I don't have endros on this side because of the plot. So I just kind of use my driveway to turn around. But actually, most of the time, I won't turn around. I'll just pull up to the end and back up, and we'll park the grain cart on the other end of the field and use that to weigh into. So we'll dump after every pass. If you watched yesterday's video, you remember all those tops that were breaking off and running through the cornhead? Look how much cleaner it is here. You can see all the ears flying around, you can see them snapping off, and all we're bringing in is the ears and the husks. The combine is so much more efficient when we can do that. That's, this is, that's good. I don't know why it's working so much better here, if it's just a varietal difference or what, but uh, that, that is good. This corn's a little wet. 25. 108 day here. Some of this stuff is going to be pretty wet. I know we're going to run this wet, especially some of the full season stuff on the plot, but we're going to do it anyway. That's probably why it's feeding in better, because the, the, the stalks are not as brittle. It's fall. We got to go get the green cart. It's a little muddier out here than what we were in yesterday. That's not great. We'll deal with it. Good morning, Brock. He moved my grain cart for me. All right, so basically from, oh, I don't know, about here that way we can harvest. Not a lot. I got into a spot in the corn here where the, the tops are more broken out of it, and I uh, started bringing a bunch of material in, and we plugged up our auger. So we've got to reverse it, run it backwards a little bit, and then we'll kind of bump it see if we can't get some of this stuff to feed through without me having to get out there yeah see how that auger stops turning without me having to get out there and actually unplug it but we might have to well it's starting to go I think we got it. Keep moving. All right. Have to slow down a little bit or open up the deck plates to let more of that trash through, maybe. See how it kind of wraps in there and doesn't want to feed in real smooth all the time? That's, that's what happens when the stalks still have a little dew on them. They're a little damp. You get those broken tops, and instead of pulling down through, it starts. Uh, breaking off and, and then they don't always feed in the smoothest so yeah it'll be okay the point throws are done here um, so we're ready to do the plot I'm gonna empty the combine I got a full hopper on there and we'll get the cart emptied into that truck get everything set up I don't know if uh, Wade or Tony is here yet but I think we're ready to go. We did 7.3 acres of this field. There are 17 left. 17 acres of plot. That's a lot. Did you guys count how many times I said, all right, well, in yesterday's video? When I was, when I was editing it last night, I was kind of like, you can't start every clip with, all right, well. So I'm making a conscious effort to not do that today. <laughs> ah, whatever. This grain cart has quite a bit of reach, but we're using all of it. Reach across this waterway here. I don't have to get the truck super full. There's not that much corn in there. In fact, we can just go put some in the front. 
cool. All right, so we're ready to start harvesting this plot. I've got agronomist Wade here. Howdy. Wade, tell everybody what a test plot is. A test plot is where we take a lot of different hybrids and we test it on Nathan's farm to figure out what hybrids work best in what specific areas and on what specific soil types. Right. So you guys remember all the plot signs that we had here. They're gone now because, well, we're harvesting it. Uh, so each one of those, every eight rows is a different hybrid, different set of genetics that's going to perform differently on our farm and everybody else's farm. And so we put these test plots out to compare how it, they, how the hybrids compare to each other here. Other people put them on their farms to compare them elsewhere. So that's the point of this. I'll show you how the process works once we get out here. Wade and I spent an entire day planting this this spring. It was a very long day. So um, we want to get good data off of it. And we should. It's a good test plot. Today's the day it pays off. That's right. All right, so this is uh, the first golden yeah. harvest entry in the plot. This is a 95-day corn, which is super early for us. We do not plant 95-day corn here. Um, it's 18% moisture, 19. There's some good stuff in it. We'll see. So the idea here is that we combine these eight rows, and then we're going to go unload it in the grain cart, and we're going to weigh each sample individually. We're also taking some uh, uh, samples of the stuff. We're pulling it right out of the grain tank. We're gonna put it in plastic bags. We'll take it back to our uh, grain test shack there, run them through our tester. That'll give us the moisture and the test weight on them. We can correct for yield based on the moisture once we get that. Uh, and we compare them and we see which ones yield the best. We're also kind of taking notes from the combine cab here on standability, plant health, plant type, all that kind of stuff, just to uh, mental notes more so, so that I know what we're looking at. If something is not standing well, uh, that's a bad sign. This one's not too bad. So the the combine yield monitor does give me totals and stuff. I don't think it's accurate enough for what we're doing. It's a it's a good comparison. It's helpful, but uh, the the weights from the grain cart will be much more useful than the uh, yield data off of the combine. So after we get done harvesting, we pull up to the grain cart here. Wade jumps up and grabs a sample out of the grain tank there and puts it in the plastic bag throws it on the floor and then we will empty into the grain cart when Tony who's standing over there on the other side of the tractor tells me he's got he's got the iPad with the scale and is making sure uh, that it's empty and writing down the weights for us this one here I know what it is uh, well it'll be interesting to see and the reason is because it's that candy corn variety with that real dark orange corn heavy test weight this hybrid we're up to 104 day here I believe it is standing really well. Look how far down there you can see between that row. All the way down, there's no broken stalks. That's, uh, that looks really nice. Hopefully it's yielding well. I mean, it's yielding well, but hopefully it's yielding well compared to everything else. Now we had a grain cart load, so Brock is getting that emptied for us. And Phil said he needs wet corn for the dryer, otherwise the dryer's gonna shut down. So doing that, we're gonna move, relocate down here a little bit farther. Uh, are we halfway across this plot yet? We gotta be getting close. No, yeah, there's 26 we're entries. About halfway. All right, we're getting there. It's been it's only been an hour. We're doing really good. Hey, look, you can you can look across the field and see my house again. That'll be nice. See if anybody's down there from the farm. Sure, would be nice to have some sighting on that house, but uh, I'll get there, I guess. Uh, we're getting into the full season stuff now. This last one here was 112 day. Uh, we've got 413 day hybrids, which is fuller season than I plant. I don't know why we had to put 413 day corns in my plot, but we did. Uh, but you can see the moisture is ticking up. So uh, this is a load total, so it's each individual pass. That one, it says average 215, uh, but 26% moisture. It's uh, They're pretty wet yet. Um, but that's part of the reason we harvested it today, to show those maturity differences and how the, the early corns were, you know, they were 18% or drier, and then these, wet, these later ones are much wetter. So. Yep, it works. You can also see we've got a little bit of green left in some of these full season hybrids. I think they're black layered. I think. I don't know. 26%. It's got to be black layered. But they're, uh, the, the late season plant health, or at least they just they're, they're, they didn't die as early as some of the earlier stuff, I guess. This one looks really good. Well, just like it's supposed to happen, we're on the last hybrid, the fullest season, and it is just killing it here on the yields. We saw a couple of 300s pop up on the monitor there. Uh, 
it's gonna win the pot it looks like although we'll see when we moisture correct it although it's saying it's 28 percent so it knows that it's wet 308 um 312 yeah 320 this one's not supposed to win from what i hear and what they tell me uh that hybrid which was an experimental so it would have been a new one for 23 crop year if it gets advanced uh, but I hear it has some trait integration issues, which means that it will not get advanced and I will not be able to plant or sell it. Figures, the one that we won't get is the one that's gonna win my plot. That's on par for every plot I've ever done, I think. All right, the variety trials portion of the plot is done. It's time for lunch. All right, we're done with lunch. It is time for agronomic trials. So we got a lot of different stuff out here. We've got some seed treatment differences. We've got starter differences. We've got nitrogen rate differences. We've got fungicide, no fungicide, population trial, all of that good stuff. It's still going to take a while. All right, so we're doing our agronomic trials here. We've gotten into the planting depth study, and I don't know if you guys will remember this from way back in the spring, but I planted this one at like one inch deep, and then we had a two inch, a three inch, and a as deep as the planter would go past. And this first one that was one inch deep looked absolutely terrible coming out of the ground. It was really uneven. The corn was, uh, there was some sitting in dry dirt. It didn't sprout good. It didn't come out of the ground uh, good even emergence. And so I expect it to not be such good corn, and it's not. We'll see how much better the next ones are. I don't expect to be a ton of difference between the other three. Just this one was the one that looked really bad. So this is why we do these agronomic trials. They're really interesting. We get some really good data off of them. We're into the 16 row entries, where like starter, nitrogen rates, those kind of things that I couldn't split a half a planter with. Makes them go a little faster when I can harvest back towards the grain cart as well. Oh man, I was just gonna show you that my iPad's gonna die and it died. So we've been using this. I pulled it out of that tractor to um, record the weights and just write them down from the combine cab here so I don't have to keep climbing up and down and it died. Now we're gonna try and use my phone. Okay, we are done with the plots. Uh, just finished going through the moisture testing and uh, test weight stuff on all of the um, agronomic trial stuff there. So we've got that. Wade actually has the variety trials results emailed to me already, so I've got that back. Um, we'll get the rest of these results later tonight or tomorrow probably. Dad jumped in the combine. He's shelling corn right now, uh, doing the field across the lane, opening up some endros and stuff. I have a meeting in about 45 minutes with my wife to go pick out flooring for our house. So I have to go and do that, and then when we come back, I think we might think about switching to beans. So I should be back around 5.30 or so. We could get a pretty good jump on some beans here tonight. So that's the plan. But it's good to have that corn plot out of the way. It did take seven hours to shell 25 acres of corn, which is ridiculous. It should have taken three at the most. But it needed to be done. It's good to have it out of the way. It was a good day to do it, so I'm glad that we did. Y'all remember that X9 we saw at the dealer a month or two ago? There she is. 50-foot draper and all. All right, I'm back from my meeting. Um... Grain cart's sitting there. There's an empty truck there. There's another one down the lane that's full. Dad and Brock are back here blowing the combine off, getting the head switched. I called them when I was leaving and on my way back and said that I was coming and that we should go run beans. So they're getting stuff ready to do that. Uh, Dad says to me, I shouldn't tell you this, but this corn back here is the best corn that I've ever ran non-irrigated. I don't know what it ran, but that's a really good sign. So. We're going to go see what's going on. I'm probably going to jump in the combine. We're going to go try and run 80 acres of beans yet tonight. It's quarter to six. I think we can do it. Just doing a little dusting. There goes the head. We're fueling. We loaded up on government juice. I washed the windows and the mirrors. And you guys know that little electric motor that was giving me trouble? Adjusting the concaves yesterday. Oh, I better plug her back in. I got a new one and we put it on So hopefully That fixes our problem there Let's go running some beans some very good beans. This is the first ish It's really the second but this is the first field of beans that we planted that wasn't in March uh, April 
17th, I believe it was. These are a 3.1, 3152 Golden Harvest. Um, there is some green spots in them. There's still some leaves, but they are dry. Averaging 12.1, which is not bad. Let's go. Let's get them. We're going to hammer this out, try and get it done tonight. I don't know if we'll get there. There's about 82 or 3 acres in this field, so we're going to be here for a while, especially if we can't drive any faster than this because they're tall and there is a lot of material, and when they're green, they feed in hard. But when they're yielding in the 70s, you don't complain about how green your beans are. You just get them. Oh, what's that tractor doing here? Why is that truck parked there? Guess we probably shouldn't try and turn the trucks around in the field, even if they are empty. <laughs> ah, there's one for the air. Can you guys see in that mirror? It is dusty back there. Well, let's look at the camera. Yeah. These beans are dusty. Well, we missed them pulling it out. Now they're trying to make a plan to figure out how in the heck are we going to load these trucks and uh, still be able to get them out of the field. Uh, we'll figure it out. It doesn't matter. Just figure it out. He still hasn't figured out where to park this truck yet, so I'm going to have to get out and talk to him. Plus, I keep pushing on one side of my head down there for some reason. I just want to make sure nothing's broken, guard, knife, something that's causing it. Could just be damp ground conditions, but it's worth a look. Nothing here is broken that would cause me concern, so that's good. I'll check the rest of the head. Oh, right there we got one. That one's going to be a problem. We might fix that right now. That's a problem, isn't it? Uh-huh. That's hot, too. That's going to be a problem. All right, guess we got a little maintenance to do before we keep going. Rest of it looks okay. All right, well, it fixed the one broken guard. Um, that stuff in the middle, it wasn't actually a guard. It was a couple of knife sections, I think, that are broken. I don't have any of the right ones with me. Um, the nice thing is right there in the middle, they actually overlap each other, so they're still cutting. It's okay. I need to fix it, but I adjusted a little bit. So I think it was, I think the two guards were too close together, and it was causing it to heat up, and it broke and not good. I just fixed some of that when we were finishing up beans the other day, so clearly something was not right that it's broken again. Um, I do have the parts, they're back at the shop. I'm gonna keep running it until I can get them. Hopefully I don't need them tonight. Uh, if I do, I can have somebody bring them over to me. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. Um, I am, I'm getting less confident that we're gonna finish this field, 70 acres here tonight. It's, I have a feeling that these green stemmed beans, tall, tangly beans, are gonna get a little tough when the dew sets in after it gets dark here. So we'll run as long as we can, but we might get shut down before we're ready to be done. Well, for whatever reason, I'm having all kinds of trouble down there on that side of the head with it wanting to push. It's doing it again now. Put back up and then let the wad of stuff go through. There's nothing wrong with the cutter bar. I just checked that. Um, I think what's happening is that the, the discharge or the um, uh, spinners, power cast tailboard uh, that are throwing the trash behind the combine and spreading it are throwing it into the edge of the beans and it's creating a bunch of residue there for that to push through and it's not able to uh, push through it I guess or it's it's bunching up and building up it's doing it again and so I keep getting little piles like that um, I keep turning those spinner speed down a little bit so it doesn't throw it so far to try and alleviate that situation but it hasn't helped so far i could also cut these beans on an angle um and i would do that except for that i had a split planter out here with two different seed treatments and i'm trying to harvest them as separately as i can so we're actually harvesting right down the middle of a uh, uh, two different planter passes where it's the same variety but um if i didn't have that i would do these on an angle most of our beans most of the rest of our beans anyway. Um, Phil planted them on an angle, so we will be harvesting on an angle when we're going straight, if that makes sense. This is a little frustrating, and the tall green beans does not help that situation. Stupid beans wrapping on the dang reel. We gotta come out, pick them off. 
So this field of beans that I am currently combining, this field that's averaging 72 and spots running in the 80s, this is the first field that I saw white mold in. It's one of the heaviest white mold fields that I saw. Now, admittedly, I was looking at them over there, and maybe I just haven't got to the really bad white mold spots yet, but I have a hard time believing that. And I am just blown away by how good these beans are. And, um, yeah, that's, that's good. That puts my mind at ease a lot, because I was really worried that we were going to have some 30 and 40 bushel beans where we had white mold. And, well, they're quite a bit better than that. So, that's quite encouraging for the rest of our beans, to be honest. Found some green ones. They get better. They get better quick. Alright, I'm tired of being frustrated fighting this stupid head pushing. Um, so, I'm going to try a new approach and then so far it's not helping. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll help. Anyway, we're going to run on a little bit of an angle. So we're at 357 degrees, as Brock just said. Yep, 357. And what that does is instead of the rows being in the exact same spot on the cutter bar all the time, we're constantly working across them now. And so hopefully if something does start to push, it'll work across uh, into a different spot on the cutter bar and sort of free itself. <sighs> we're going to have a wedge here, but we'll deal with that. That's, that's easy to take care of. It's just I'm tired of fighting it. All right, well, running on an angle is helping a little bit, but it hasn't completely solved the issue. I think the beans are getting a little bit tough anyway. Uh, they're not nearly as dusty as they were. They're also a little wet. I don't think they've really picked up that much moisture. I think it's just particular spots in the field. You get a low spot and they're a little greener, a little wet, but um, I think I'm gonna call it. I was really hoping to finish this field. It's not gonna happen tonight. We're gonna, we're gonna finish this round and uh, that'll fill a truck, and that's a good stopping point. I'm gonna hit it harder tomorrow. <sighs> Our truck's here. Our green cart is full, full. And I'm tired. 940. We did 40 acres here, just shy of it. And we did about 40 acres of corn today, which, to be honest, isn't a very good day. But, considering we did that plot, I guess it was semi-productive we did okay so hopefully we'll have a better day tomorrow 200 acres of beans would be awesome that's asking a lot you want to try here brock or 150 you plus would be better or would be good but um i think it'll work we'll see let's just watch him for a minute Cart sure is impressive. Holds a lot of grain, unloads it fast, nice tracks. That's cool. Shut the gate, it's full. Shut the gate, shut the gate. Uh oh. Ooh, we got it. Good work, Brock. Brock went back with Phil in the truck. Guess I get to take the 8300 back to the farm. All right, guys. Thanks for watching today. Um, I'm sure that some of you, somebody at some point, is going to ask about results from my corn plot that we harvested today. I will, when I get a chance, attempt to try to remember to post them likely to my Facebook page. Um, I do have my seed business website. They'll end up there eventually, but it might be a while before I get around to putting them there. So um, if you don't follow me, Border View Farms on Facebook, do that. Uh, and I will make sure that I share the post from my seed business, XL Seeds. You can find that one too, if you really want to. And that's where I'll make the um, plot results available to you guys. So um, 113 day experimental won it. Uh, 109 day, I believe, experimental was second, and then 102 day corn was third in the first of the commercial varieties. So, um, yeah, pretty good results. It wasn't quite what I expected, but it was they're they're good, and um, 
I haven't seen the results on the agronomic trials yet, so we'll get all that stuff at some point here too. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe buttons for me. Um, harvest videos are going to continue pretty hard here for the foreseeable future. So check back tomorrow. We'll be combining beans all day. Have a good night.